Hello and welcome to another episode of India Risk Report. Statistics have shown that strikes, closures and unrest are the biggest risk factor that continue to threaten industrial and business operations across India. And though the overall loss of man hours has come down dramatically, this is an issue that industry and the corporate sector and of course the government must prepare for because any time the situation can spill out of hand and it could impact on the economy in terms of tens and thousands of crores. To look at the impact of social unrest on the Indian economy, we have two hands-on experts with us uh, who have a great deal of experience in looking at these issues. We have Colonel Raj Yadav with us who is also a lead advisor of IRIS and is an expert on protection issues and event and event related protection and we have Colonel Das, a consultant, an independent consultant on safety and security issues. Uh, Colonel Yadav Saab, my first question to you is, what is the total figure of the so-called unorganized sector in the Indian economy? Because that will give us the idea of a scale of problem that the government of India is faced with. Uh, because it's easy to control people who are regulated and part of the organized sector. But the unorganized sector, though an effective vote bank for a lot of politicians, are difficult to manage and control. So what's the figure? Sure. Uh, the figures have increased uh, drastically in the last two or three years. At the moment, I would say it's around 75 to 80 percent, which is, uh, uh, there is no set figures as far as statistics is concerned on this. But I presume it would be around 75 to 80 percent of that. Right, Karl Saab, you brought out this point about this very large number of people in India who fall in the unorganized sector. But it's important eventually to involve them into the Indian success story, into the basic economic net of the government. So what benefits would they have uh, by coming into the government's net? Because the figures that come to my mind, and people always dispute statistics, but they say at the current state, even if you have people who are declaring their income, uh, you only have actually 1.6% of India's population that pays taxes. Some say the figure is close to 6-7%. Some say uh, the figure would go up with this demonetization initiative of the government. So in crisp form, what will you say should be the steps the government can initiate to make them more part of the Indian success story. How do they benefit? So uh, one of the steps, as you rightly said, is uh, after this demonetization, probably uh, I, I believe that all, uh, all, all the unorganized sector people will be having their bank accounts and all their pay and wages will be given through their banks. So one of the uh, benefits which will, uh, which will be there because of this is that the government actually has a data and they, from where they can always define as to all the statutory compliances are being met or no. For example, if I am supposed to get a minimum wage salary of 7,000, which includes my ESI and PF also, so there can be a breakdown which can be seen from the transactions which are being held in the bank. Secondly, being digital or being, uh, being uh, f uh, monetary transactions through RTGS and uh, uh, other forms of electronic uh, uh, transactions. It, it's a safe uh, uh, methods of doing this and it will benefit eventually to the worker also because the mediators when this, uh, like in good old days when you used to have a munshi giving cash to the worker would probably not give him the full amount of his wage. All those things will be taken care of. So I personally feel these kind of benefits are going to go, through, go down to the... So there is merit for the unorganized sector to become part of the organized absolutely, sector. Absolutely. But uh, there is also a certain series of benefits that there are various people in the chain who may lose out from it because they want the unorganized sector to remain unorganized so that they get their sense of anonymity and they are able to evade certain other tax pressures. Colonel Das, uh, you said policing is one of the effective measures that you can have uh, in terms of hard measures that you can take to ensure stability of the industry, to ensure stability of the investors' money. After all, you know, big companies, big countries and corporates that put money into India, they want to make sure that they don't lose man hours. But policing, again, you look at the case of Haryana. Haryana seems to have various industrial pockets. 
but the rioting in Haryana, the chief minister was absolutely reluctant to use force, whether it was to appease his political constituency, whether he was plain indecisive. So, where do we draw the balance between use of force and non-use of force? Soft measures versus hard measures. If we go back to, say, uh, Kaveri water dispute, which yes. happened in, in Karnataka, or we can have the Telangana issue, which happened in Andhra Pradesh. The, if you take the statistics out of it, uh, though it though it said it about 40 days or 50 days of closure, but in in commercial terms it was not as much as 30,000 uh, lakhs which was uh, spent in in Haryana because Haryana, the the profiling of the people is you know different from from uh, the places like Karnataka and uh, Karnataka and Andhra Pradesh where they where even if they want to have a band, it is actually a, it is actually a process so it is a unionized process here it is a deunionized process and which is mindless. So it is very wrong to say that you know wrong to compare two states having the same sort of same sort of problems and having the effective loss loss. So uh, coming back to your point of policing, you know, it's a very thin line, you know, where where one can take a decisive point. But uh, the uh, the underlining aspect is that that if it is a if it is say particularly to jart, jart agitation, if it is if it is a caste related caste related issues. Then it should stay confined to the caste related issues. But quite clearly, I mean, you know, there but are there is spill out, but there'll yeah. always be a spill out. Yeah. But it is and it, it it gets into a dangerous dangerous situation. And if you see the total number of people who are actually involved in creating problems and and creating issues, there were hardly any to the total number of population which which is actually going silently. Okay. Very interesting points. Uh, we'll be back after a break to look at in greater detail how we should deal with the unorganized sector and how the rules of the Union of India should apply across the board and the benefits to people who are employed in every sector of the country. very seldom that you find the police response professional and appropriate. And in such situations, invariably, without exception, the police is caught on the wrong foot. For several reasons, and I will enumerate them, the political leadership is not serious about handling it with the due deterrence as it should have happened. Number two, the police reluctance to reach the spot in time. And then you have the unfortunate incidents as the one you had in Haryana and elsewhere, lynching of senior executives, including Japanese executives in uh, Gurgaon, in the Manesar factory, the lynching of Mr. Chaudhary in Graziano in Greater Noida, and the like. Then waking up after the incident and the follow up and the follow through is not very professional and the no nonsense approach that you would expect of a professional police force that is totally wanting. You'd obviously want to know the reason. Obviously, the political leadership is more interesting in the vote bank politics rather than dealing with the situation. Therefore, you find a lack de siècle, not a coherent approach, a systematic approach to handle this problem. Absolutely, absolutely, they have a very major role to play. And the first is that they should be independent as far as in-house security is concerned. They should have their own QRTs, they should have their own contingency plans, they should have a mention in the internal security scheme of the district, internal security booklet that every district has, so that in case of crisis they are aware whom to contact, where to contact, what should be their link with the district control room, the nearest police station and the nodal officers. Therefore, I would strongly recommend the short of investigation of criminal offences, every other thing, perimeter security, force multipliers, add-on of technology and other things, they should find a place and mention in their internal security affairs and therefore the role that I find has a new dimension that today you should not be totally dependent on the local police forces, firstly because of the large number of vacancies, number two because of the fact 
that hardly any police force would have them as the topmost priority and number three even if they were to have the political leadership is not very serious in handling the culprits who seem to be at the back of this problem. Private security can never be a competitor to the police. It's a force multiplier. It is an assistance in the times of need. You see all the areas where you have industry, be it Gurgaon, be it Noida, be it Bangalore, the police take upon and expect the private security to dovetail in their efforts of law and order, patrolling and surveillance operations. Therefore, the private security has a major role to play. It is the best practice the world over all over the world, whether it's the US, whether it's Germany, whether it's England, the private security's role is increasing exponentially year by year. And in India today, it has to be that the police has a role, yes indeed, but it's only investigation and the use of force. The rest of security aspects will have to be taken by private security sooner or later. Specifically at the labor related issues, uh, we have with us Sri Pavan Kumar, who is the Bharatiya Mazdoor Sangh's Zonal Secretary, a man with enormous clout and experience in dealing with labor related issues. Pavan Saab, I will ask you the first question that the statistics are not the agitation of labor figure is not the same. तो इसका ये दिखा रहे हैं कि हालांकि मैन आर्स लॉस अभी भी हुए हैं काम करने की तरफ से और 2015 में 446 थे हालांकि उससे पहले 3636 घंटे लॉस हुए थे तो ये तो बहुत अच्छी एक किस्म से स्टैटिस्टिक है इसको आप मंजूर करेंगे और मंजूर नहीं करेंगे तो आप बताइए क्या ये स्टैटिक्स में गलती है अगर मंजूर करेंगे तो क्या कारण है जो एकदम से लेबर अनरेस्ट इतना उतर गया नहीं वास्तविकता क्या है ये आंकड़े जो भी सरकार देती है वो अपनी सुविधा के आंकड़े देती है वो कोई हमारे हिसाब से आंकड़े नहीं देती किंतु एक दूसरा बात भी सच है पिछले पंद्रह एक साल में जब से और बल्कि पच्चीस साल में जब से एलपीजी की पॉलिसी आई है तब से काम का प्रकार बदला है अभी रेगुलर एम्प्लॉय के स्थान पर कर्मचारी के स्थान पर सरकार और उद्योगपति कॉन्ट्रैक्ट वर्कर की ओर गया है उसके कारण से ये आंकड़े शायद दिखाई देते हैं किंतु अगर गए दो साल तीन साल के आंकड़े आप देखेंगे तो उन आंकड़ों में ऐसी स्थिति नहीं है एक लगातार तेरह में पंद्रह में बारह में बड़ी बड़ी हड़तालें देश भर में हुई और एक अगर आपको ध्यान होगा बड़ा अनरेस्ट पिछले दो तीन साल में आप मारुति का अनरेस्ट देखिए आप कोयम्बटूर का अनरेस्ट देखिए आप पुडुचेरी का अनरेस्ट देखिए आप नोएडा का अनरेस्ट देखिए आप कलकत्ता को देखिए जहाँ सीधा सीधा इतना अनरेस्ट बढ़ा कि वो जानलेवा साबित हुआ अभी मैं आपसे एक और सवाल पूछना चाहता हूँ कि साठ प्रतिशत जॉब्स जो हैं इंडिया के अंदर ये एक किस्म से अनऑर्गेनाइज सेक्टर में है और इसमें किस हद तक ये अनऑर्गेनाइज सेक्टर इंसान के हित में है या इसके खिलाफ जाता है नहीं पहले तो आप इस अपने आंकड़े को ठीक करिए सरकारी आंकड़ों के मुताबिक भी टोटल हमारी जो वर्कफोर्स है लगभग 48 करोड़ की उसमें सेवन परसेंट सात प्रतिशत केवल ऑर्गेनाइज सेक्टर में है नाइन्टी थ्री परसेंट वर्क फोर्स हमारी अनऑर्गेनाइज सेक्टर में है और अनऑर्गेनाइज सेक्टर में हमारी वर्क फोर्स है इसका अर्थ यह कि वहाँ श्रम कानूनों की परिपालना नहीं होती श्रम कानून के दायरे में वो लोग नहीं आते सारा अनरेस्ट आज वो रिकॉर्ड भी नहीं होता आज सारा संकट वो इस असंगठित क्षेत्र के मजदूरों को लेकर है उसमें चाहे ठेका मजदूर हो 
या खेती में काम करने वाला मजदूर हो या गांव में काम करने वाला मजदूर हो या कंस्ट्रक्शन वर्कर में काम करने वाला मजदूर हो वो सारा अंडस्ट भी कहीं काउंट नहीं होता किंतु अभी अभी सरकार ने एक अच्छा स्टेप लिया है वो एप्रिसबल है यदि इम्प्लीमेंट हो जाए तो सरकार कह रही है कि हम हर वर्कर की पेमेंट ये कैशलेस करेंगे थ्रू बैंक करेंगे लेकिन मुझे जो समझाया गया है कि भारत की तकरीबन एक तिया एक तिया से लेके आधी आबादी तक ऐसी है जिसके बैंक अकाउंट ही नहीं है और जो ये जनधन अकाउंट वगैरह की भी बात चली है आज तक तो इनमें किसी ने पैसा डाला नहीं है अभी रात ही रात से जब ये डीमोनेटाइजेशन पॉलिसी चली है तब लोगों ने धड़ाधड़ पैसा वहाँ डालना शुरू कर दिया तो ये किस हद तक सरकार कंट्रोल कर सकेगी अगर औद्योगिक क्षेत्र में छोटे उद्योगों में छोटे इंटरप्रेनर्स में ग्राम स्तर पर अगर मजदूरों के खाते खोलकर उसकी तनख्वाह उसमें जाएगी जी। तो निश्चित रूप से मजदूरों का जो शोषण है वो रुकेगा लगभग 25 करोड़ खाते इस देश में खोले गए आम आदमी को बैंकिंग से जोड़ने का एक बड़ा प्रयास हुआ सरकार दूसरे चरण में जो भी मजदूर कर्मचारी काम करता है उसके खाते खोलने जा रही है और खाते खोलकर सरकार की इच्छा यह कि उसकी सैलरी उन खातों में ट्रांसफर की जाए और जितनी उसकी आवश्यकता वो पैसा विड्रॉ करे और बैंक में पैसा विड्रॉ करने में विमुद्री करो या कोई भी वो कहीं आड़े नहीं आता है इसमें थैंक यू वेरी मच सर बहुत बहुत आपने पते की बातें बोली और मेरे ख्याल से जितना मुझे समझ में आया सबसे ज़रूरी बात यह है कि ये सेक्टर हालांकि हम अनऑर्गेनाइज कहते हैं लेकिन अपनी तरफ से ये ऑर्गेनाइज है खाली सरकार को इसके साथ ज़्यादा तालमेल करने की ज़रूरत है जिससे कि इनको भी वही राइट्स मिले जो ऑर्गेनाइज सेक्टर में लोग इंजॉय कर रहे हैं बहुत बहुत शुक्रिया और वील बी बैक आफ्टर ब्रेक वेलकम बैक वी आर कंटिन्यूइंग टू लुक एट द इम्पैक्ट ऑफ सोशल अनरेस्ट बोथ ऑन द इंडियन इकोनॉमी एंड मोर स्पेसिफिकली एट द कॉपरेट सेक्टर कर्ल यादव इट हैज बीन सेड दैट वन ऑफ द रियल प्रॉब्लम्स इन इंडिया इज द एबसेंस ऑफ गुड एम्प्लॉयमेंट अपॉर्चुनिटीज एंड दैट इन टर्न हैज रिकोशे इफेक्ट ऑन द सिक्योरिटी इन्वायरमेंट इन वेरियस पार्ट्स विच आर इंडस्ट्रियल पॉकेट्स so in a holistic way what would you say should be the steps that industrial zones must incorporate collectively so uh, one of the things i would suggest is that uh, you should be aware of as to what is the environment within the uh, industry going on for a particular manufacturer so you can't operate in watertight compartments Absolutely. everyone all Absolutely. security heads must interact with all other security head and share best practices and share their concerns and threats absolutely yeah so that's that's one aspect right. i said secondly is we have uh, now started this concept of uh, skilling india mm. uh, this thing i think it is more uh, uh, pertinent to participate in this kind of uh, initiatives by all the corporate houses and make it a, a more fruitful and more uh, uh, beneficial uh, in term mutually beneficial in uh, for the individual as well as for the corporate houses for themselves uh, kan das last short quick question based on the economic losses which strikes in tain are there any alternate measures of engaging between the government and the industry because you talked of figures between haryana and karnataka haryana seem to have lost something like 34000 crores whereas karnataka lost 22000 crores whichever way you look at it you might say haryana may have lost more and karnataka lost less 22000 crores is the net worth of some of the big big companies in india so i mean you just wipe it out just because somebody wants to store a political point how do you stop that from happening there are two ways of looking at it first way is to get get uh, uh, certain sort of a regulation in place and so that that can control the industry part of it and the second part of it is to discipline the workforce so that they uh, and the third part of course which i would like to as the welfare measures so if if all these three is combined then you can have a productive uh, solution and it can guard against guard against uh, uh, these issues very good point actually uh, there is a need both to keep a very close interactive uh, watch on the workforce and incentivize them that uh, whether they are organized or disorganized losses are something that is going to impact us all thank you very much for being with us on this show uh, we will be back next week with another episode until then goodbye and thank you